All right, recording, recording. Okay, let's do this. This is going to be a very quick video. Um, here's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to charge or make a portable charging system for a Tesla car, right? Now, that's not easy to do because Teslas charge at a very high rate of like seven, up to seven and a half kilowatt. And so that requires a giant inverter, right? To make DC power into AC power so it could then charge the Tesla. Now, I know people are going to suggest, uh, why don't I just make a DC battery pack and then just keep it all DC and go into the car? Well, that's not any easier because the Tesla's battery is 400 volts, right? And so in order to do that, you would have to either make a small 400 volt battery pack, which is, you know, increases the danger uh, you know, because 400 volts is not, you know, it's not a walk in the park. It's it's a lot of power. It's a lot of voltage. Or you'd make a low voltage battery pack with then a DC to DC to bump it up to 400 volts. And then you can charge the battery, right? But then that requires a giant DC to DC about the same size as this. And so they don't, they're not really available because not a lot of people want to do that. It's not a common thing that people need to do. Now, on the AC side, it is very common, so you can buy this for like 700 bucks, and then that's how you can do it. Another issue with keeping it DC is that you have to trick the Tesla car into letting you, giving you access to the DC terminals on the batteries. So that's not easy because then it requires software and all that nonsense, right? So this is by far the easiest way to do it. You have a low voltage battery, uh, 24 volts, you know, 24, 48, whatever, something like that, and then have an off-the-shelf uh, inverter sort of like this one to make it into 120 volts, right? Uh, DC, I mean AC, and then from AC it goes into the car, which then uses the onboard chargers to go back into uh, DC at 400 volts, right? It's not the most efficient way of doing it, but it is the easiest way to do it because you can use stuff that is off-the-shelf. now. The car requires clean uh, power, right? It doesn't like modify sine wave, doesn't even like some of the cheap sine wave inverters. So this time around, I uh, got a $700 uh, Ames Power digital pure sine wave inverter. Now I'm gonna try to use this. I don't, I'm not 100% sure if it's gonna work. I know that it's been successfully done with the low frequency inverters, which means that are that they have a transformer, right? So transformer brace uh, inverters do work, but they are big and really heavy, which defeats the purpose of having uh, a portable, right? So it makes it not so portable of a design. So this is 100% uh, digital, right? So which may it means that it does the... the um, it does the voltage conversion, right? The boost all digitally using MOSFET. So then that makes this unit really light, still kind of big, but it's very light. And so I wanted to take it apart and see what's inside of a semi, you know, uh, mid quality inverter like this Ames power, right? Uh, up until this point, I've been messing around with a lot of this Chinese stuff and I know what the Chinese stuff looks like inside. So I wanted to look inside on this before I plug it in and see if it works, just to make sure. And you could tell that this is a little bit higher quality because, well, we have an extruded aluminum case that, it's a two-piece uh, aluminum case like this one, right? All we have to do is, so that's higher quality already. Um, and this is what uh, the 3000 watt Ames inverter looks like inside. Here's some differences right away from the Chinese stuff, right? It has a breaker, right? This is a circuit breaker. It's uh, rated at 220 volts, uh, 1.5 kilo amps. So 30 amps instead of a fuse. It does have a fuses on the inside here on the DC side, 200 amps, right? Five of these 40 amp fuses. Uh, so that's different. Usually the Chinese ones will have that, but they will lack this uh, circuit breaker, right? Uh, here's another thing that is different. 
this unit has a uh, GFI or GFCI uh, plug, right? And for those who don't know what th that is, is it's a system that protects you from a problem, right? If something were to happen, you know, the ground usually protects you. The ground is an actual circuit that has a, a rod that goes to the ground, right? And so it will have less resistance uh, than your body. And so if something goes wrong, instead of the energy flowing through your body, it'll flow through that uh, green cable that all your your AC circuits should have, and then it'll go and dump it into the ground, right? Now, of course, this being a portable system, it's going to be hard to ground. Uh, and so that's why they use this GFI uh, plug, which in that, what it does is it keeps track of both lines, the hot and the neutral. And if it sees a difference in the resistance of any of both of those lines, then that means there's a leakage somewhere, which is usually someone <laughs> being electrocuted. Right, or it doesn't necessarily, it's just if it detects a difference between those two lines, it'll shut this thing down. It'll just, you know, this is a, this is actually the same thing as this, a circuit breaker that is activated by sensing a difference in between those lines. So it's a pretty useful thing. It, they use it on old homes that don't have the grounding uh, cable on their circuits, right? Before, like in the 50s here in the US, the grounding didn't exist. They didn't realize that they hadn't been invented. And so in order to retrofit those old buildings uh, easily, you know, uh, and cheaper than running a new cable through, you know, walls that are sealed and they don't have conduit because back in the 50s they didn't use conduit, then they'll use this this plugs in there and then you can also use these plugs to then daisy chain into other plugs right so this one will handle you know whatever a full circuit of like 25 amps or 30 amps or whatever so i took it apart because in order to charge the tesla you have to be grounded the the evsc that is included the little portable unit that's included on the tesla uh checks for grounding and if it's not detected it won't let you your your tesla charge and so in order to do that on a portable device like this, you'll what you have to do is, I forget what they call it, but what you have to do is you have to trick this system or the charger to think that it's grounded. And the way it does that is by checking that the ground cable and the neutral cable are connected together. Now, this is not a proper way to do this on a house wiring, but in a contained, sustained system like this, it's not that dangerous. There are some inherent dangers to doing it that way. Uh, mainly that it will probably, the, the GFI will not work, but we're not gonna be using that system anyways. So we are gonna do that. But here are some of the other differences that I see of this uh, device that are not found in the Chinese versions, right? So they have current sensing systems like this Hall Effect here. Uh, and then this uh, temperature sensor that is directly on the MOSFETs, right, on the heatsink for the MOSFETs. There's also uh, cooling, right, on both sides here and even on the inside, right? So to move, to get air moving once it's inside. Everything has this, um, uh, this adhesives to prevent stuff from moving, which is a really good idea, right? Because if there's, if you put this in a vehicle or something and there's a lot of vibrations, then stuff could uh, end up, you know, working itself loose. So when this unit, it prevents that from happening. This is a really good idea and it's a sign of a higher or mid level, you know, piece of equipment, right? Um, when you look down here, these are 10 millimeter cables. They're supposed to be able to carry about 125 amps or something like that. So there's they're dual. And when you look in here, you see that there's also um, some kind of glue in there. There's probably like Loctite. So it's from the same purpose so that they don't work themselves loose. So there you go. That stuff is, see, even in the connectors here, they put that glue in there. So all of this stuff is, is glue. All the connectors are glued. These are transformers because they have primary and secondary windings. These are probably inductors because they're on the 
a seaside uh, but I see a lot of glue I see a lot of like adhesives in here which is a good sign of a quality product and then these are I don't know what these are plated right uh, contacts here so they should be able to handle 100 150 amps without much problem without much heating so there you go this is what the construction of a mid-level you know inverter looks like this is 24 volts on the dc side and 120 on the ac side i wish i could find a you know a European version of this that will put out 220 volts because then I can just feed both of the legs into the charger uh, into the Tesla so that it will do twice the power output without increasing so much of the amp rating right and so we're gonna I'm gonna do some tests and some experiments to see if that what I the aim is to get the system as small and light as possible but that can do the the most output out so that you can quickly charge your tesla in case you were stranded in case you needed to emergency just get a few more miles to make it to the next charger so that's what the the project that i'm working on and this is uh the first inverter that i'm gonna attempt to use all right so this is just a quick video to show you what's inside one of these guys i hope you enjoyed it uh stay tuned for those videos there i think they're gonna be exciting I'm going to be working with another YouTuber, hopefully, uh, to help me uh, explore this project. All right. Okay. See you guys in the next video. Bye.